the New Orleans community is mourning the loss of a Palestinian-American teenager killed in the West Bank last month. 17-year-old Tawfiq Abdel-Jabbar is one of the 94 children among the 370 Palestinians killed in clashes on the West Bank since October 7th, according to the United Nations. In late January, over 100 cars formed a motorcade in his memory along a New Orleans highway. I spoke with his father, Hafez Abdel-Jabbar, earlier this week from the West Bank, and I asked him what happened to his son. What I know and what happened uh, is my son was traveling from one piece of property to the, another piece of property with a friend, meeting with other friends so they can do a barbecue. And uh, as he was traveling, he was, uh, I think, ambushed by a settler, retired police officer, a, a soldier, we're not sure. There was three different weapons used. The truck was hit with 10 bullets. Uh, four of them is very clear to the driver's side and two of them to the passenger side. But luckily, and thanks God, the passenger had ducked and uh, he's 16 years old also. He's an American citizen. And uh, he was traveling uh, towards the village uh, on a dirt road uh, from the mountain. And that's when he was struck and uh, lost control of the car and uh, flipped three times or four times and it, it came to stop. How did you learn that your son had been killed? One of my friends called me and said, uh, your son truck uh, had flipped on the dirt road. And uh, I said, where? And he told me where. So we, we rushed over there and that's how I find my son in the car uh, shot in the head. Israeli officials say that they have launched an investigation. Are they sharing any of that investigation and the findings with you? They have not shared anything with me personally, no. They said they did, but they have not shared. They know who did it. They said they made comments to me that they know who did it, but he's not under arrest until they finish their investigation. I'm not sure why. Do you trust the results of the investigation when they'll be complete? I, I cannot trust them, no. I don't trust anything that they do. I hope my government can step in and uh, do their own investigation so we can come to a conclusion who shot my son. When you say your government, you're referring to the American government, is that right? Yes, ma'am. I am an American citizen, been there since 1996. Five of my kids was born in the U.S. in Gretna, Louisiana. My wife is an American citizen, so my government is the American. And my son was born and raised for 16 years in Gretna, Louisiana. So I'm seeking help from my government, from my president, to seek justice for Tawfiq. You moved your family to the West Bank in May of last year. Tell us a little bit about why. Well, I was born here in, in, in Palestine, uh, in Mazar Sharkia, about 25 miles away from Jerusalem. My dad was born here. His dad was born here. The whole family, I can go back to 1870, 1880s. And I wanted to bring my kids so they can spend a little bit of time here. But uh, this is what happened in the first nine months. I've only been here for nine months. You mentioned you're seeking help from the U.S. government. Can you tell us about who you've been in touch with, who has reached out to you, or what you've heard from the American government? I've just been getting calls from the, from the, from the consulate here. I'm trying to reach to senators, congressmen, trying to put pressure on, uh, on the Israeli government to allow us to do an investigation uh, to see who did, who did that to my son. All I've seen is just a comment from the White House speaker, I guess, and that was it. I haven't seen anything yet. There's no movement. Can I ask about your family? I know Tafik has several siblings as well. How are they doing? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit tough uh, for my wife. I have two daughters, uh, eight and six years old, and I have a 12-years-old boy and a 21-years-old boy. It's a bit tough. My eight years old, she kept asking me, uh, I don't understand what happened to him. So I kept telling her what happened. And then in a polite way, trying to explain to her that he's in heaven, she still says, I just don't understand. Can you explain it to me? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Hafiz, my colleague uh, Robbie Chavez has been reporting on your son's death from New Orleans, and he spoke to the vice principal of his school there who said that Tafik was larger than life, and he called him a big teddy bear and said that the school was absolutely reeling after his death. What do you want us to know about your son? <clears throat> my son was full of life. A 17 years old, always happy and smiles. 
never say anything to hurt anybody's feeling, no matter who it is, no matter what color he is, no matter what religion he is. He plays football. He's full of life. He went to Muslim academy schools. He went to Christian Brother Martin school. He had dreams of engineering. They took all that away from him. What does justice look like for you right now? There's no justice. I think we lost human, yeah, humanity. <laughs> my government, my president, we claim democracy, we claim human rights, and we claim that nothing should be done against humanity. And now our own guns is killing our own children. And my son, it's a big example. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't matter if he's an American citizen or he's from Mexico or he's Latin or he's Chinese or he's white or Jewish or Muslim or children shouldn't be killed. People shouldn't be killed for no reason, like my son did. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us and for sharing the memory of your son. Thank you. Thank you.